This small plot of eastern deciduous forest provides varied habitat for an array of wild creatures. Animals that find a home here include amphibians, reptiles, mammals, and birds. The Cornell Lab of Ornithology serves as steward of the land, which is named for a spring and summer resident, the yellow-bellied sapsucker. Numerous other woodpecker species rely on this place, as do warblers, phoebes, great crested flycatchers, and others. Birds use sapsucker wood sanctuary to forage for food, court mates, and raise young. This land was logged and farmed through the first half of the 20th century. With designation as a sanctuary in the early 1950s, the woodland was protected, the pond was built, and a haven was created for animals of all kinds in every season. As water is essential to life, so the pond is central to the life of the sanctuary. In spring, male bluegills jealously guard carefully cleared circles on the pond floor, hoping to attract females with which to spawn. Bullfrogs and toads fill the air with mating calls. Muskrats forage for food and building materials. Dragonflies abound here, often flying around in mating clusters. Turtles line the shoreline, soaking up sun after the long winter sleep. Canada geese flock to the pond in early spring, grazing in the shallow water for aquatic plants. From late March on, geese dominate the water, engaging in elaborate courtship displays prior to mating and brooding their young. Female mallard ducks provide all parental care, guarding ducklings against predation by predatory birds and snapping turtles. The many dead trees jutting above the pond's surface provide perches from which fishing birds, such as the belted kingfisher, can spot aquatic prey. Deadwood also allows unrestricted access to the open sky for fast-flying, insect-eating birds, such as tree swallows. These aerial feeders eat dragonflies, moths, mayflies, and other airborne insects. Ancient cavities within the wood, perhaps excavated long ago by woodpeckers, now serve as swallow nests. Fledglings are readily distinguished from adults by their dull brown plumage. Great blue herons stalk the pond on spindly legs, blending beautifully into the tangled branches. The smaller, more ornate green heron doesn't wade after prey, but skulks in the shadows, ready to spear the unwary fish or frog. Fall brings numerous transients to the pond, stopping off to rest and recharge their energy stores before continuing their migration. A merlin chooses the tallest of the dead trees to perch and preen between aerial forays. This small falcon is a superb flyer snatching the occasional nimble dragonfly in mid-air, which is then delicately dismembered and consumed.
large numbers of Canada geese again converge on the pond in autumn, filling the crisp air with their insistent honking. This late season throng includes geese from more northerly populations, stopping through on their southward winter migration. These northern geese are more compact with shorter bills than their southern counterparts. After resting for the journey ahead, they tumble away with the last of the leaves as cold November winds arrive. The eastern edge of the pond is young woodland, having been a fallow field only a half century ago. Birds that require tangled undergrowth and relatively small trees are found here, including winter visitors such as tree sparrows and year-round residents such as titmice and cardinals. Warmer weather brings high drama to the young woods, which resound with territorial and mating vocalizations. Two song sparrows engage in acrobatic sparring over a fallen log. The victor sounds off, declaring the boundaries of his hard-won territory to neighboring song sparrows. Yellow warblers are a flamboyant inhabitant of new, shrubby woods. American red starts also inhabit the young woods, gluing together grasses or moss with spider silk to make their nests. Male red-winged blackbirds arrive several weeks before the females. They sing to establish territories in which they might attract small harems to breed. Hard-working female red wings exhibit great ingenuity in supplying food to the young in their nests, which are carefully hidden amongst the marshy grasses in the pond. Fledgling red wings enjoy parental support for up to two weeks after leaving the nest. Cedar waxwings are specialized fruit feeding birds and so favor regrown orchards, overgrown fields, and open woodlands where fruiting shrubs are found. Autumn finds the summer residents of the second growth woods foraging alongside fall migrants, such as the yellow rumped warbler. All are intent on storing energy, either to help them through the coming cold or to give them strength to complete lengthy migrations to warmer climates. The western edge of the pond borders older woods, an area that was logged through the early 1900s, but never completely cleared for farmland. This more mature woods provides a very different habitat, larger trees and little undergrowth. Birds of older woods are often colored to blend well in the deep shadows of the taller trees and are more often heard than seen. One example is the oven bird, a small wood warbler. A close relative of the oven bird, the northern water thrush, finds perfect habitat on the waterlogged floor of the old woods. The tail pumping behavior of this warbler sets it apart from similar species. A red-eyed vireo carefully selects twigs, which will be incorporated into a small, open cup nest for up to five eggs. A standout amongst the birds of the old forest, the scarlet tanager provides colorful contrast as it flits about mid-canopy in search of insects and spiders. 
The habitat value of the mature woods is greatly enhanced by dead wood that is left standing. Dying and dead trees provide nesting cavities for birds such as chickadees, as well as rich foraging grounds for insect-eating birds, such as the white-breasted nuthatch, easily identified as it climbs head down over branches and trunks. Larger, older trees provide critical habitat for woodpeckers of all kinds. The observant spring visitor to the mature woods can spot the nesting holes of hairy woodpeckers, an excellent opportunity to view their family lives firsthand. The pileated woodpecker was once in sharp decline due to the clearing of the eastern forests. These crow-sized woodpeckers require big trees for nesting and so need areas that have not been extensively or recently logged or cleared. Pileated woodpecker populations are now rebounding as second growth woodlands mature in areas protected from development, logging, or agriculture. The only constant in nature is change. Sapsucker woods will continue to evolve from season to season perhaps maturing into an old growth forest as once covered eastern North America. With continued careful stewardship, this precious place will remain prime habitat for a variety of native birds and other wildlife, a haven in which wild creatures may always find sanctuary.